has done it. I'm a national service personnel, and when I started national service, I told God that um, by the time I finish national service, I want to own my studio. I didn't know where the money will come from, but I don't want to be like um, the other graduate who will go around looking for a job because I've really labored for him on campus, so he should just let it happen for me. And um, it reached a certain point, it was becoming serious. Like, um, I was very depressed thinking about, thinking about it. National service is passing and I didn't have a camera and I was very, very, very depressed. So um, in um, April, there was a testimony here about, I think, the soldier who got a, an, an appointment and he was promoted. And I key into that testimony. So in that week, I think it was 13th April, I was there praying and a certain brother of mine, he was, we were on campus praying together. He asked me, how is everything? I said, everything is fine. He asked, how is business? I said, I'm waiting for breakthrough. He said that when he was praying in the morning, the Lord laid it on his heart to test me concerning my business. I was like, wow. I was just praying about it and thinking about it. He said, we should meet on Saturday and talk about it. So when we met on Saturday, he asked me to write down a few things that I would need to start up something. And um, he said, um, May. So he's, he's getting some money. So May, he will let me know. And in May, we secured um, a storehouse. He gave me 30,000 Ghana cities. <laughs> and I was very, very, very surprised because um, looking at it, it will take a long time to set it up. So I did a flyer and I put on it, uh, studio is opening 1st June. But after two weeks, the studio was done and everything was set up. Everything was just uh, set up. And, and to make the, the, the matter even interesting, when I'm doing my national service now, they are making process to retain me there. Wow. Yeah, my national service. Wow. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not thinking of how to even balance the two. Balance the Give the Lord some good praise. The Lord continue to grace you. The Lord continue to favor you. You won't struggle with anything. You keep running in life with grace. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, I'm an ex-Muslim. Uh, <laughs> within... Even this, um, this year, I fasted and I went to eat, I prayed and I fasted. But before I went back to Islam, I was, I went, I, I became a Christian at 15. But Christianity didn't work for me, so I decided to go back to Islam. No, I have, I have, I have a reason. Go ahead. Yeah. I should go ahead. Okay. So I started going to um, church. I felt like when I was around 15, 14, I started seeing things. And it was weird, because in Islam, we don't believe in witches, we don't believe in all those things, we believe in dwarfs. We believe that if anything, it is dwarfs, it is short dwarfs that are possessing of you. So even if you see something, or you see, you go in a trance, or you go, you see a vision, for them, it's the demon that is, um, the dwarf that is possessing you, it's not you that is seeing things. So for me, um, at 14, I was lying down in my couch, in my dad's couch, and then I had a voice call me mentioned my name three times. And that's one of the reasons why I've not changed my name. I heard my name three times. And I said, who is calling me? It was not a dream, it was like a trance. So I had to climb a mountain, very long mountain. And this mountain, I was seeing other men also climbing that mountain. So I got to the top of the mountain. And then the, the person who called me walked. I did not see the face, it was just like a long rope. The person just walked forward and I tapped the person. And that was it, I got up. 
So after that, and I started having um, attacks, like I will be, I, will, I don't take a shower after six. If I go out and take a shower after six, I'll collapse or I have congestion or all those, all those sickness. So I don't bath. When it's 5.55, I don't take a shower. So one day there was a pastor who was preaching around our area. I didn't know what happened, but the story my, my dad told me was that I went to the pastor in the middle of the night. He was having an all night. I attacked the pastor and beat the pastor. I was like, how can I be at 14 and beat a man of God? It, like, he was, <laughs> the early I beat the pastor, but the pastor did not give up on me. He prayed for me and kept me. Then all the imam around the area came out and asked him why he had to deliver me. So it was a crime for him to have delivered me. So fast forward, I left my dad because my dad wanted me to get married. In Islam, it is okay for you to get married at the age of 15. So they got me a husband and everything. I did not know the date was set for me to get married at 15. And then I ran away from home because I didn't want to get married. <laughs> so that was when I decided, okay, if Islam is not working, let me look for somewhere that probably is not in that direction. I don't want to get married at that age. So I decided to go into church. I found the first church. I attended, but I felt like there was, it was, something was not right. So I moved to a different church. For there, I was, I was looking for, you could, before you become, from a Christian to become a Muslim, they will teach you how to pray, the kind of bath you have to bath, um, the ways of Quran will teach you. But I was expecting to get that, that, oh, okay, since she's, she was a Muslim before she became a Christian, let's sit her down and teach her the way of being a Christian, which is like teaching me how to read the word and how to pray and all that. I didn't get any of that. Even though I'll open my Bible, I'll read it. But I, I really didn't understand anything I was reading, though I was reading and doing what I was supposed to do as a Christian, but I wasn't getting it. So I was like, for some time, I stopped going to church for like two years. I was like, mm, this church thing is not really for me because where I was going is like, for me raising up, I know that if you have to give an offering, or how I was raised up, if you have to give an offering, it has to be willingly from you or from your heart. So when I started going to church, and like, oh, come and do this, come and do this, I got confused. I was like, ah, why are they demanding for money? Every time money. To the extent where one of the reasons why I had to stop that church was like, the pastor made a statement and said that if you are in the church and you don't, so you don't give um, tithes, he's not going to bless your marriage. He needs to bring your, card, um, your tithes card for him to see how much you are paying every month. And I said, ah, why? Tithes should be for me giving willingly or what I'm doing. So it was like all about money for me. So I go to church, I'll sit down and look at what the pastor is saying and I get up and go. I wasn't receiving anything. It was because it was the same thing every single Sunday. And then I decided to leave. So um, when I decided to come back to Christianity, well, it was this year, um, one after fast, I was confused at that time. Honestly, I was confused. So I stumbled upon Papa's uh, message, one of his messages, and I started um, watching. I was like, hmm, this man is saying exactly, it's like, remember my head, I even had, uh, I had chills all over my body. So I immediately went back. Which, which fasting did you say you did? Islam, Ramadan. Okay, so after you left that church. I went back to Islam. You went back to Islam? Yes. Wow, which yes. year? Um, no, I, I came, um, I didn't go to church for two years. I stopped going to church, but this year I decided that I'm going to join Islam. So that was like from the beginning of this year, I went back in praying and doing everything I was supposed to do. Wow. Yes. So when I started listening to a prophet, and it's honestly the same day I subscribed, I didn't know what I decided to follow. And then I went to a prophet's page and I was just watching the view. And I was like, ah, this is what I need. Because the, everything he was saying to me at that time was like, they are telling me something. And I said, ah, now I have to locate this church because I have not had a church that has spoken to me like that before. Because that's what I've been waiting to hear. Somebody speaking to me with a word and making me understand the word. So, <laughs> so um, I said I wanted to come here, but I didn't know here. I didn't know the road from my place because I, I live at Legon Hills. I didn't know the road from that place to this place. So luckily for me, unfortunately, the lady that sews for me comes to church here. I didn't know. So one day I saw on her state also and she's like, Alpha Hour. I'm saying, hey, which one is this Alpha Hour? So I called him and said, ah, Alpha Hour. 
I'm sorry now, um, Pastor Elvis, oh, no, no, so, yeah, that is the church. And I'm like, have you fellowship then? She said, yes. I'm like, can I come with you on Sunday? She's like, yes. So we came to church on Sunday, and I have not, I've been here. This is like the, probably the seventh or the eighth time I'm here. Uh, yeah. 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 And I have never regretted being here. I'm very happy. I was like, where has this been? all this time where where has it been <laughs> so my other testimony is to say papa thank you mm. you know so, um on alpha our papa made a statement about his chains papa about god telling him not to wear chains and one day he came back from lectures and the, all the chains were broken in his room he said something he said he it was said to him to do it by himself he didn't tell everybody that Come and tell you about oh, stop wearing chain because God has told me not to. So then it's like at that same moment, something hit me and said, ah, but I've been telling you to stop. Okay. So when I came back to, when I was a Christian, I thought it was okay to wear anything. I thought it was okay to wear certain kind of clothes. I didn't know it was, there was something. So when Papa said that, I realized that my colleagues and I had worked, we all buy anklets. Everybody will wear their own. Me, they, my own. That same day I wear it to tear. <laughs> I didn't understand it, but I kept buying it. Anytime I buy it to, it will tear. The, in Islam, you're allowed to pierce as many times as you want. It's not a sin. So I went and I pierced my nose. The following day, I came back from piercing, which was uh, the next day. I was taking my shower, and then my sponge pulled the, no, uh, the ring nose out of my nose. I went to pierce my ear, this side of my ear. I pierced the upper, uh, up, um, the up, the up, yes, of my ear. It won't heal, so I had to take them off. So when Papa made that statement, it took me back. It's like somebody was telling me a story again, like, "Oh, I have told you to stop doing this," don't it? and then it came to my clothes. Anytime I wear something that is above my knee, I feel so uncomfortable. I can't even go out. I feel like there's something wrong. I didn't understand why I felt like that all the time. I didn't know. But when I wear clothes that covers me up, I feel very comfortable and I'm very, very um, confident in doing whatever I want to do. So then when Papa said that, I said, no, this is what Papa meant. So I went back to bring all the Islam dresses I have packed, the long, long dresses. I started bringing everything up because I said, even if it looks like a Muslim dress, I'll still wear it. So while it's covering me up, I'll still wear it. Yeah. get the last one. Well, the least, anyway, the least. Um, yesterday, when we were about to close, Papa mentioned and said, God has, um, I just thought something about my breast. Okay. So when he mentioned the breast, I was like, amen. But then when I got into my car, it was a playback for me. I was like, I used to feel pain. Okay, so before I had my first, um, my first daughter, three months after I had her, I had this breast of mine swollen. I didn't understand. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I went to the hospital. They said, oh, it's okay, sometimes like that. And then they, did, they told me nothing was actually wrong. So at that time, I prayed, and I would use anointing oil, and I would rub it. And then one day, it, a pie. Then after two days, um, after some few days, when I came back, this was a year media. To the extent mm. when, my, when my daughter comes to the room, I have to pretend as if everything is okay. Because when, yesterday, when Papa said that, then you don't know me that after I joined after I I didn't feel that pain again. Oh. I have no idea. Oh. I didn't feel that pain again. Oh, we give you the glory. Father, keep your daughter in the faith. Your greatest decision is to follow Jesus. And I pray that you will never turn back. Amen. Every part of your body is secured. Amen. That breast condition disappears forever. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I joined our file, I think, uh, if my memory serves me right, uh, episode 137. In fact, my I've, been, I've been watching your steps on when I love it, and I, I used to tell my friend, Oh, this is Apostle Joshua. Sell my Ghana own, I say Ghana old version of Apostle Joshua Selman, wow. but I've ne I never joined Alpha, but even though I have fallen in love with the messages, mm. then one night I didn't go to all night, I was in my room because it was raining, 
and the whole place was flooded. I mean, Kumasi actually. Okay. So the whole place was flooded, and I saw Pastor. Mm. So he sent the link. I said, well, this time, let me look at it. He may be there. He got some good stuff. I know he's a good guy. So I opened it, and I started following. I started praying on episode, episode 137. Then I fell in love with the program. So since then, I've been joining since now. Um, there was uh, a guy I, I've, been, I've been trying to. I'm a businessman. And, but all of a sudden, all business went down. I have three shops too close. The one is almost like dead. But I, I had a property business. I've been trying to sell this property. They were not going. But there was this guy from outside who wanted to buy property for me. So since last year, June, so he came down this year, February. But he's been reluctant to pay them because he said he's been due before. So we've been talking. So last week, um, I made um, his property document a point of contact. Everything is done. It's, it's left with the signing. So you mentioned. Uh, you mentioned some things, and I, I left it up, and I jumped in my room. I was dancing. I was alone, so I was happy, very happy. Yes, then I told God I've been coming to Accra to come and do something on Saturday, but then I would leave, I would leave everything and come Friday to, to come and enjoy the miracles, so to come and take some of the grace, some of the fever, and some of the anointing from the house to go. So on Thursday evening, I was there when I received a message from me. So uh, I look at the message, so I have paid part of the premium. As, uh, it was part of my five. Um, full testimony. It was the first one. Wow. So I said something in my heart that God, if this money is paid, okay, I'll sow a seed on the altar of um, Grace, Mountain. Grace Mountain. But then when it was sent on Friday, I was coming to a car in the morning, so I couldn't go to, to cash any money. So then the, the Holy Spirit told me, look, don't f forget about cash. Just sign your check and make sure that you connect to the altar. It is better that way. So I signed the check yesterday, then I called my bankers and so yeah. Truly, they have paid the money, but it will reflect um, three working days. That is Monday. Wow. But before then, all business were down. I don't remember the last time 10,000 hit my, my account because it started when I started having dreams and I was invited to, to join Occult. And I said, No, I'm a child of God. I'm Jesus. I won't join. And it's strange. The kind of people I see, you see there in Ghana, you'll be shocked. In my dreams, hmm. it's happened about three or four times, but all of them are rejected. But since then, all business went down. It's like everything I do. I was a big business, it cooled down. God. Um, le le hundreds of thousands of guns, it just go down the drain. I don't know what I use them for, but by God's grace, for the first time, something more than 10,000. It, it, it has begun. Amen. It has begun. Father, in the name of Jesus, all the other three. Businesses are rising. Amen. Properties are being sold. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, late of June, I used to have this headache. Like when I'm there, I feel like something is hitting my head, and I'll be having some burning sensations in my eyes to the extent that I can't even bend my head. Because when I bend my head, I find it difficult to see again after I, I raise my head. So I complained to my mother. And it wasn't only the headache. When I'm there, I, I used to feel like there's something also draining in my head. I don't know whether it's blood or I don't know. But I could feel that there's something draining in my head from time to time. And when it happens like that, I don't see anything. So I'll be there until that drainage stop then I'll start to see again. I told my mom and she told me to go to hospital so that maybe they, they take a scan or x-ray on my head. When I went, they did everything and they said, nothing is wrong with me. So the doctor said maybe it could be stress so I should try and sleep more so that everything will be okay. She gave me some painkillers and sleeping tablets to take so that I can sleep. I did it. It wasn't going. The same thing. The moment I wake up, the first thing I could feel in the morning was that sharp headache and the burning sensations in my eyes. So when the alpha hour got to episode 132, a friend sent the link to me. And when I clicked on the link, the music was playing. I followed the music to pray. So I was looking forward to hear the prayers as it continues after the, the music. But the prayers were not coming. 
when the music plays, it ends, then it will reconnect me to episode 62, while the thing is on 132. So I told my friend that he has sent me a wrong link, and he said, no, that's the correct one, so I should click on it, it will come. And I will click, the music will play, then it will redirect me to 62. I, it continued for about five times, so I got tired. And I said, okay, let me join the 62 like that. So as I joined the 62, we were praying, and then pastor raised a prayer topic like, we should pray against um, spirit that feeds on brains. When he said that, I felt it was me. It was, how can I be feeling some drainage in my head? Like, so I prayed. And after the prayers, I used communion as my point of contact. I poured the wine in my head and took the away. So after it, that was all. No drainage. Jesus no Christ. No. See how, see how God reconnected her to the very episode that was to settle her case. Can we give Jesus the glory? This. <laughs> that means when we were doing the live 132, that was not your episode. <laughs> no, but that was live, but it wasn't your episode. See how beautiful the Holy Spirit works. <laughs> Father, we give you the glory. year December to the month of May. In fact, I was going through a lot of um, rental issue. The most painful thing is say, Ube tamsika ako my landlord and you won't get the room. Me, the first payment was 12,000. Papa niji sikanu eko she akwa safari and edi chanenu. The second money, it was 7,200. The third payment was seven thousand. My many catchers me say, "Oh, the Sikana Koye contain until like I was frustrated. I was stranded. I had to purge friends or sleep in the guest house. In fact, Bibia Ebasa, a mommy. So a friend introduced me to Alpha Hour, and the first day I made joining Alpha Hour. I felt the peace of God upon my life. I was so okay. Like, even though I was still believing God to give me a place just to lay my head. And, and I know I, I, I had faith that that place, I, I'll get a place to lay my head. But I was so happy. I was so happy within my spirit. And I told myself that I, 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 have, to part, I have to partake in every prayer topic i'll make sure i will never make me out i don't even know how to go about it so i started um following and praying on any um prayer topic he, he brings out and one thing i always do is say any testimony that come i take it personal like i take it personal and then i practice my faith she's a man she say i know i'm not married obi um enya ka I'll just get any key and I'll be practicing my faith. Yeah. This is man. This is a Like I'll open door and I'll be like, I'm entering into my new house. I was doing like. So God being so good, I met somebody and um, I, I believe it was the grace of God that led me to to this woman. And God being so good, I have a chamber and hall of my own. And. <laughs> One more thing that happened, um, 19th July is my birthday, and I've been praying to God that the only gift I want from him is to, is to see him more. I want nothing more. I don't want anything material, but I want to know him more. I want to experience the kingdom of God. That is all I've been praying about. So I was there one day, and God was like, I, I want to give you something. And this thing I'm giving you, you are going to use it for his kingdom. I didn't understand that dream. So I was talking to a friend just like that. And I, I told him, oh, 19th is my birthday. And he was like, what do you want? And I said, oh, I want a cow because um, I'm, 
I come all the way from Adenta, joining the um, church and other stuff is so stressful. So I just said that I want a car. The next day, he gave me a number. He said, go to a garage and pick a car. <laughs> If the, if the video of the car is ready, can you play? The car is a pink, it's a pink car. That's the pink car there. That's the key of the car. She didn't pay a dime. The car was brought to her just yesterday. Everything is done for her. What do we say to Jesus? God, I'm looking for you. God says, I will give you what you need to look for me. <laughs> when the motive is right, God will bring the supply. I was suffering from some addictions, which is masturbation, womanizing, alcoholism, and also sometimes stealing. Uh, it started way back JHS. When I computed JHS, then I contracted this addiction, which is masturbation. So throughout the SHS, I was masturbating throughout, and everything reflected on my results. So I feared that I need to wait to write of deck. I wrote the of deck, but God being, really, uh, being so good, I passed. But I just uh, I keep on doing all those kind of stuff. I've consulted a lot of people, telling a lot of like student pastors my problems, the kinds of addiction I'm facing. But yes, still, upon all the prayers, meeting, Bible studies, everything, yes, still I'll go back and still masturbate again and do all those alcoholism, womanizing. I, oh, it was really, really bad because I wasn't performing well at school, everything become bad, so, so bad, until uh, a friend introduced me to half hour. But, uh, uh, actually, one of my girlfriends, one of them, sorry, one of them introduced half hour to me. Because she, she, she is part of my girlfriend, so I didn't take it serious. And also, another, uh, one student pastor also uh, sent a link to me. That one, too, I didn't open until a friend from UK, JHS friend from UK. And I said, hey, a UK for your crop won't pay an end of me. Then I need to join. So I joined uh, Alpha on, on episode 114. Yeah, 114. Then I keep on connecting to the holy water and then praying along. To, to. So I've been praying along uh, for a long time. So now, but since then, since then I joined Alpha, that was the end of everything. Eight years masturbation. After joining Alpha, she doesn't have the urge to do it again. Womanizing, stealing, drinking. Somebody celebrate Jesus. Also, I'm also a footballer as well. Okay. And I'm suffering this severe muscle pool pain. Muscle pool. Sometimes during crucial matches, that be the time where the coach need me. That's when the muscle pool will come and just affecting my football career as well. I'm a second division player. Throughout the season I couldn't I wasn't able to play well because of this muscle pool pain. So on half hour episode one, two, three. Yeah, and Papa made a declaration that there's a certain boy. He described me well. Now I knew that. <laughs> I knew that everything the man is saying it was about me. But before that, now I don't believe in those stars. But at the time Papa made that declaration, I started crying. Like I become dumbfounded. I was surprised. Uh, how how come the man say such a thing about me? So I cried a lot. Then I pray alongside. From that day, father, uh, father make that declaration. That was a good thing. I will come again. Okay. Okay.
Jesus. God bless you. I want to testify to the Lord for what he has done in the life of my husband. He's an electrical engineer with the electricity company of Ghana. About three weeks ago, we dropped off our daughter at school and we were on our way to Accra. Then he had a call from work that there was a problem with one of the switches. So we should go there and find out what was happening. When we got there, we saw firefighters there. Then I said, probably this could be a high risk. And he said, oh, they have switched off the main switch, so nothing will happen. Immediately, he got inside. I heard boom. There was a blast. And even the firefighters were running. From where I was standing, I wanted to get inside. But the heat alone, there was nothing I could do. And they said, please run for the sake of your baby. Just run. How can I run and leave my husband in the fire? And so I just ran and said, but you people, you are supposed to help. You are rather running. What am I supposed to do? So I just said, God, I'm a widow at 32. That is all I was saying. Even if he survives, all I said was, it could be a very bad injury. So I just ran to the junction. Then I stopped. When I turned, I saw my husband lying on the floor outside the switches where he had been walled. I was like, ah, did I see a ghost? Then I went back and I, he said, just go. He just said, just go. I said, how, what, how can I even run and go to? Then when everything was down, he came. And he said, it was like something pulled him from where the switches were. And then he came outside. Then I said, ah, with the kind of, from where I was standing, even the heat, I could feel the heat. So why were you, and I have seen so many of his colleagues do this plastic surgeries. They were badly injured, some of them had to quit. But I thank God that not even a strand on his head ah. was lost. Ah. God saved his life, and I'm grateful. God has done it! Yeah.